So I have a list for you today. It is a list of books that are really great books, and they are also books that you could read in a day. Now, usually I don't emphasize reading books quickly on this channel. I like to talk about quality rather than quantity, but really by saying that these are books that you can read in a day, what I'm really saying is that these are fairly short books. I think every single book I'm going to recommend is under 300 pages. A lot of them are under uh, 250 or right around that mark, uh, and some of these are um, really classic books. Uh, from the Western canon. A few of them are a little more modern. One of them came out only a year or two ago. Either way, I think you're going to like pretty much all of them. And if I left out a book that you think should be on a list like this, uh, let me know down in the comments because I'm always looking for more books and maybe we can help recommend books to each other. So I have seven books to recommend and I want to make this kind of a fast video. So let's just go ahead and get started. The first book is the Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. Now, I actually hesitated to put this book on the list, and that's because it's actually not like a single story. It's a series of vignettes all centered around Mars, and there's no framing story. Um, I was thinking that if you were kind of hanging out, you know, by your window or in a good chair on like a Saturday and just trying to read a, a book in one day, um, it might be a little bit harder to sustain interest uh, because there isn't that framing story with that kind of narrative pacing that's going to get you there. However, um, I just think it's a really great book, um, and you don't have to actually read the books in a day, right? Um, but it's a great little short book. Um, I think it's better than Fahrenheit 451. Uh, uh, I think it just shows um, Bradbury's writing skills a lot better um, and sort of the depth and breadth of his creativity. The second book is The Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass. We are actually going to be talking about this book on a podcast episode. We post those to YouTube, but you can also find us on your podcast app, which is called The Classical Mind. Uh, that episode's going to come out in December. Um, so this would be a great time to make sure that you're subscribed or uh, maybe go support us at theclassicalmind.com. Either way, that book is astounding. It is one of the few books that I would say should be absolutely required reading for every student in the United States. Probably by the time you leave high school, you should have read that book, especially considering that uh, Douglas had to teach himself how to read and write um, under horrifying conditions. Um, and so he didn't have what we would consider to be a very modern education, but he's a, an astounding writer. Um, his prose is really good, uh, but also he has this kind of moral clarity. There's no hedging. There's no caveats. He just says the truth as he sees it. And it, it, it's it's a really good story, um, but also it really talks a lot about sort of from a philosophical lens, some of the horrors of slavery. You know, it's enough to recount the physical horrors and the political horrors, um, all of which were real. But Douglas has a way of talking about it, which also speaks to its effect on the soul and the human person. And that applies for basically everyone involved in that horrifying institution. Uh, the third book is Beowulf. Uh, it's an epic poem. It's a good story. Um, it's fairly easy to read. Um, I haven't read a ton of like alternative translations. I just say, I think I've read the Heaney translation before. I think it's good. I think it would be pretty easy for you to read. This is also going to be a podcast episode for us. Um, that's going to be the February episode. Um, and so, you know, you could read this in a day and you'd be preparing to listen along to a long form discussion. The next book, um, is, a, is a poetry collection um, by Wendell Berry. It's the Mad Farmer Poems. This is a little more recent. And so I, I understand if maybe you don't think this is going to maybe easily fit into sort of classics like you might come to this channel for. Wendell Berry is one of my favorite living writers, however, and I just highly recommend all of his work. I love his essays. Um, I love his poetry. I'm not as familiar with his novels, um, but he's he's just astounding. Um, the Mad Farmer poems, um, I read it in about an hour, and I think you could do the same. However, um, I would say that this is a collection you're going to come back to. It's a collection I need to come back to as well. Wendell Berry is really casting a vision of a kind of life that we could all live. It is more agrarian. It's more idyllic. It involves hard work, and it involves a kind of rootedness to the land and community. If that sounds at all appealing to you, then I think you will like these poems. Every time I read Wendell Berry, I think that I want to move. Uh, every time I read Wendell Berry, I think I want to move back to the Midwest, buy a farm, and uh, maybe turn the internet off forever. It's really, really good stuff. Um, he hasn't convinced me quite yet, but you know we're getting closer. The next book is Invisible Cities by Italo Calvino. I would say that if you are someone who maybe likes um, fantasy novels, I know that there are a lot of you who watch this channel, but you're maybe looking to get into a slightly more literary uh, frame or type of reading, Calvino is a great entryway. Uh, Calvino is telling a very uh, magical, mystifying, strange, intriguing story. He's building worlds for you. 
but it's it's poetic um and it's just it's surreal it's 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 I, I feel like almost every word that I can come up with falls short of just how good it is. Um, um, this is a book that I haven't read in quite a long time. It's a little hard for me to talk about specifics because of that. Um, but as I was compiling this list and I, I realized Calvino needed to be on it, I just said, okay, cool. Uh, this weekend, I guess I'm going to read Invisible Cities again because, I mean, what a book. Um, Calvino wrote a lot of other books, Cosmo Comics, The Non-Existent Night, he has translations of Italian folk tales. Um, all of them, I think, are quite good and uh, worth digging into. The next book, I don't, can't seem to find it. Um, I can't seem to find it on our shelves. We recently reorganized our bookcases, and um, we must have misplaced this book, but I'll find it. And uh, that's Descartes' Meditations. I have talked about Descartes on this channel before. I recommended him as part of my uh, eight philosophy books you should read. Um, with the meditations, you know, they are quite short, and you could read them in a day. Now, the meditations are deceptively simple. They are actually really quite dense. Um, my wife, who's a fellow philosopher, took a class where they spent a month reading four pages of Descartes. Um, there is so much there. And so don't think that if you read it in a day, you're going to get everything out of it. But as I've suggested before, you should consider maybe doing your kind of quick and dirty and fast read of a book where you try to read it as fast as possible to understand the point of the work and the general structure of the dialectic. And then you can dive into the details later. And that's what I would recommend that you do with uh, the meditations. So, you know, uh, curl up in a nice chair um, and then sort of go through these thought experiments with Descartes. Um, maybe don't assess the arguments too rigorously yet. Always be thinking about that a little bit, um, but just try to understand. And then you can evaluate later when you go back and you do that second, more thorough read. Another book that's not on my shelf, and that's because I only own a digital copy, uh, and I definitely need to fix that, is Notes from Underground by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Anyone who watches this channel knows that Dostoevsky is one of my favorite writers. They know that Crime and Punishment is probably my favorite book, um, but you can't read Crime and Punishment in a day. Notes from Underground is not nearly as good as Crime and Punishment in my mind, but it is quite good. And I think it shows some of that almost slapstick style that um, Dostoevsky can engage in, this kind of absurdism. Um, and it's also a nice introduction to kind of the literary side of existentialism. I can see why people pair this with works by Sartre or Camus uh, when they're teaching existentialism classes. Um, and, and for a lot of you who might be interested in both literature and philosophy, Dostoevsky is really a natural uh, writer to read because he's kind of doing both at the same time. That's part of the, the magic of, of his writing. And my final recommendation today is, is Piranesi by uh, Susanna Clark. Uh, Susanna Clark has this other wonderful book, uh, uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Uh, that book is uh, really long. You can't read that in a day. Piranesi, you can read in a day. And in fact, it is one of maybe two or three books on this list that I actually did read in a day. I could not put Piranesi down. It blew me away. Um, I think that it has been generally critically acclaimed. It might have won an award or two. And I'm going to tell you, it deserved more acclaim and more awards. There is almost no amount of praise that I think would be excessive for this work. Uh, Clark is a lot like Calvino, actually. I think Calvino and Clark are natural pairings on this list, um, both on the kind of fantasy side. Clark is being considered a fantasy author by a lot of people, but writing incredibly literary works as well. Um, Piranesi is beautiful. It is fantastical, it is mysterious, and it is also thrilling. So if you want a, a good story, an interesting world, um, almost philosophical reflections on the nature of memory and of time and of identity, then actually you're going to get all of that in Clark, and that's like a perfect package. Uh, so many people can do the very uh, beautiful prose and the literary side of things, but the story can be a little boring, or so many people can tell a great story, but they maybe lack those other literary virtues, not with Clark. Clark can do it all. She is one of the heavy hitters of the contemporary literature world, in my opinion. All right, that's the list for you. I would love to hear your recommendations. Put those down in the comments. And uh, just as a reminder, we have a podcast and you can support us on Substack at theclassicalmind.com. In February, we have an upcoming episode where our paid supporters on Substack actually get to help us pick the book. So if that sounds interesting to you, that would be something to check out. We also opened up a Substack chat, so we sometimes chat on there. And just in general, it's a way to help keep this project going. All right, that's all I have for you now. So take care.